does sometimes it doesn't. So welcome to the brand new series about mindset. This was actually something that Stacey and I kind of talked about before we started this whole um this whole thing. And it's going to be really, really big for a lot of you. And then some of you, it's going to be a repeat of some of the stuff that you've learned in your Zoom calls and in your, um, I don't know why this is not letting me put the speaker on. Okay. So when I'm on here, I just want to make sure that it's on speaker view. I don't know why it's not doing that, but maybe it's not going to do that. I have no idea. So anyways, um, long story short, when it comes down to it, um, we have a lot of, a lot of stuff going on this year and there's a lot of different promotions happening and there's a lot of different bonuses that you can earn and everything. And what's really crazy is that a lot of us, when we first get started, we start with an employee background or an employee mindset, or we start with the, with the mindset um, that we once had when we were broke and tired and exhausted and all the things. Drop a one in the chat if you've ever felt that way before, because that's exactly where I was when I first started. And so I'm going to share a little bit about my story and where I come from just to help you understand how I know what this road to success looks like. And um, mindset is literally everything. Our book is, um, I mean, our team is like averaging a book every single week. And um, listening to podcasts every single day. And the reason why is because we know that this business is 80% mindset and 20% skill. So this Zoom call or this Zoom series was specifically created so that we are growing our mindset so that we get ourselves into the mindset of making a full-time income from home, running a full-blown business and being able to own our time and and live in the freedom that's right in front of us that could be given to us from this business, okay? So I wanna just start out really, really quickly, just sharing a little bit about my story, just to show you exactly where I come from. Now I'm gonna share some stuff that some of you knew about me and most of you did not know about me. Um, and I'm gonna bring it right back down to my, the childhood version of me, okay? Um, so think about me, little Chelsea, you know, being a young, young, you know, toddler, kid, whatever you wanna call it. Um, you know, I grew up in a family where we ran away from our problems and life was really tough when I was a kid because that was literally the generational cycle that my parents had followed. And it was a consistent problem of when things get tough, you run away. And so there was, there was a divorce that happened in my childhood. My parents got divorced. That was one of the biggest and hardest things that I went through when I was a kid right off the bat. Um, you know, my parents were fighting nonstop and, um, they were both drinking. They had really bad alcohol abuse and going through the ringer with being at the bar and me being at my grandparents' house and all this stuff. And so at a very young age, I learned how to not only people please, but I also learned how to just follow everybody else around me. Okay. So that was the generational cycle that was given to me right as a child, divorce, neglect, abuse, alcohol abuse, all the things. And so growing up, as a teenager, guess what I did? I followed in my parents' footsteps. Um, I started going through a period of time as teenage me being bullied. And the second that I started being bullied, it became, a, is this this life? Is this how life is going to always be? You know, as a child, I'm bullied by my parents. And then growing up as a teenager, I'm bullied once again. And then um, it actually caused me to spiral into this super big depression and anxiety. That caused me to choose the wrong path. And I went down a path of drugs and alcohol and abusive, you know, abusive uh, nature. Right. And uh, once again, more people pleasing, more heartache. It just, the cycle had continued and, you know, it continued right into my early twenties. And so going into my early twenties, um, I started off with an abusive relationship, very verbally and physically abusive. Once again, creating that cycle for myself that my parents had handed down to me. There was a lot of drug abuse, a lot of alcohol abuse in my early 20s. Um, when I met my other half, my fiance that we that I'm with right now, um, again, because we were friends when we were kids, but we started being friends again as adults. And um, I had already been diagnosed when I met him with, with uh, PTSD, anxiety, depression, and um, I was already seeing a therapist, counselors. I was on three different medications just to try to level things out. I didn't realize back then that a lot of the problems that I was having was actually my mindset. And it was the people that I surrounded myself with and these generational cycles that were continuing in my life again and again and again and again. Um, and once I had my daughter, I was diagnosed with postpartum depression and um, 
it literally brought me to this road where I didn't want to drink and do drugs anymore, obviously, because I was a mom, but I almost felt like I needed to find that crutch, something that it was like a vice to get me away from my life. And so I started working in the medical field. And how many of you guys know what the medical field looks like? It's a great industry where you help other people. You probably love your job when you're working in that industry. I love my job, but it was a really good vice to get away from my problems. One, Two, I was very overworked and underpaid and I was taken advantage of almost every single day. I was always showing up to work, doing somebody else's job and not getting paid for it. And I was tired of that road. And so um, if you see me looking down, I've got some serious notes for you guys tonight. So make sure you get out a pen and a piece of paper because it's about to be freaking crazy. Okay. So when it comes down to it, um, I was working like a dog. I was crying over money. Uh, my love language is quality time. And guess what I was lacking in my relationship? Quality time. So Matt and I were fighting almost every single day because I was spending more time at the nursing home than I was spending with him and with my daughter. And I missed out on the first three years of her life. So this cycle right here of working nonstop and struggling to pay my bills, this is what everybody else was doing around me everybody else. My parents were doing it. My sister was doing it. My brothers were doing it. My best friend was doing it. My other friends were doing it. My friend's parents were doing it. Every single person was living through the same exact thing that was around me. And I, this literally led me to believing that this was a norm, that was normal, you know? And for most people it was right. That was something that we were just supposed to do. That was just something that, okay, well, we'll get through it, right? And then go around the corner, income taxes come in, you're broke six months later. That was a cycle for me. And um, I got really, really tired of it. It got to this point where I became so depressed because once again, I was diagnosed with all these mental illnesses, which in reality, it was just my mindset the entire time. And, um, and I can't explain, I can't say that enough. It was my mindset the entire time, which is really, really crazy because once you hear my story now, you're going to be like, holy smokes. Okay. I see what she's saying. But when it comes down to it, I was, I went back into that rut of struggling with alcohol again. Once I had my daughter, she was three years old. I was working nonstop fighting over money, fighting over lack of time together. And it led me down this road of just drinking and drinking and just trying to find something to get away from my life and away from all the things that I felt and all the past trauma that I had from my childhood and all of the generational cycles, you know, just continued and continued until I found this girl on my social media. I literally did not really know her at all. I worked with her at a call center, but she worked across the way. So I saw her at my lunch break, said hi, bye, maybe a couple of times, but I didn't truly know her. And so um, I was super skeptical before I started this business. How many of you guys watched your enroller for like six months or more? Drop a two in the, in the chat, or you can raise your hand, whatever you want to do. When it comes down to it, um, you know, we all watched our enroller for quite some time. Most, most of the time, that's what you'll see. And you'll see that there was many times that you said, well, I want to do this, but I can't, or I want to do this, because, but I can't, right? I did the same exact thing. And the reason why I did this was because I was looking at my entire past, the childhood version of me, the teenage version of me, the young adult version of me. And I was saying, no, 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 Chelsea, you're going through this. You can't do that, right? No, 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 Chelsea, you've been here. You can't do that, right? Right? I was disqualifying myself before I even started. I wasn't allowing myself to take the opportunity that was right in front of me because I had been through hell and back, because I had been through all of these things, because I was diagnosed from, with something from, from a random doctor that really didn't even know who I was, right? They didn't know what I had been through. They didn't know my mindset. They didn't know the way that I thought throughout the day. All they knew was that I showed up in a, a doctor's office saying that I need help because I'm struggling mentally. That was it. Right. And so, um, when I started this business, I, I finally made the decision and I didn't make the decision because, um, I, you know, I wanted this big extravagant life or anything like that. I started this business because I was running away from all of the lifestyle things that I had built for myself. So I was running away from the poverty. I was running away from the alcohol. I was running away from the lack of time. I was running away from all of those things. And that was my main 
thing. I, I was at a fork in the road and I had to make a decision. Chelsea, you can either keep going down this road and you can get a DWI, you can end up in jail, you can end up killing somebody, be dead, whatever, right? Or you can choose to go down this path and you can choose to change and do something with your life. And even if you try it and you fail, right? Back then I didn't know you had to get back up, right? None of us know that you have to get back up after you fail until you actually are working in it. And then you have to, you know, push through it. And I'm going to explain this road to you guys in just a minute. This is the mindset behind success. But when it comes down to it, I got started in this business because I was running away from my problems. I was running away from all those things that I wanted more. I didn't want to stay stuck anymore. I didn't want to end up dead. I didn't want to end up in jail. I didn't want to end up killing somebody because I was drinking and driving and doing all the things that I should not have been doing. And I decided to move on the other path just on a whim, not knowing what it would do for me. Okay. And so um, when I got started, this is what it looked like. Okay. From day one. My upline quit two months after I got started. Anybody have an upline that quit right when they got started? Drop a three in the chat if that was you. Or maybe your upline was completely MIA when you got started. Did not help you with a system, didn't help you with anything. They literally left you high and dry with absolutely nothing, okay? My upline quit completely. She told me it was my fault, the reason why she quit. Once again, my people-pleasing side was, was going off. It was like a it was like, a, are you even good enough for this? Can you even do this, Chelsea? Maybe she's right. Maybe you're the reason why everybody else is quitting on you, you know? And it just led me down this path where I was at this fork in the road and I could decide to either keep going or I could quit with her. And I had to make that decision for myself. And I'm gonna tell you guys, this is really, really crazy about my story is that you know my generational cycle was to quit and walk away from things when they get hard, right? My family is has been you know born and raised to run away from problems and I for some reason knew that there was something here that I needed to stay for and so I kept going I chose to go past her I chose to go forward when she was going this way I went this way okay and this is going to make sense here in a minute when I explain this to you guys so first thing that happened my upline quit Second thing happened, my dad had a heart attack. He was in the hospital for about a week. It was like a week, week and a half. He had heart surgery and everything. And I was able to be right there by his side, okay? Um, because I was earning bonuses and stuff like that that was allowing me to do that. Um, my grandfather passed away. My grandfather pretty much raised me. You guys heard my childhood. I was with my grandparents, right? My, my whole upbringing, they were the ones who taught me God. They were the ones who taught me, you know, how to be good, how to be persistent, how to, you know, they taught me everything. And um, so my grandfather passed away. That was a real hit in the, in the heart that literally crushed me and made me feel like, well, maybe is this a sign? Is this a sign that this isn't for me? Right. Have you guys ever been there before where something horrible has happened along the way of your business? And you've been like, Lord, is this a sign like that? I should not be doing this. Um, so that happened. That was, that was my first thought was, am I supposed to do this? Right. And then, um, I built myself to Ruby after that, because I decided, I said, okay, my grandfather passed away. I'm not gonna, you know, let him die and, you know, live this life in a box. He wouldn't have wanted that for me. He would have wanted me to go on and push harder and give it my all and live a life like he was able to. My grandfather owned a business. It was like a shop for small engineering when he was younger. And um, it allowed him to save up money to be able to give us all envelopes stacked with cash when he died, like dead serious. It was absolutely crazy. None of us even knew that he did this, but he was able to do that because he owned his own business just like we own our own business, right? So can you imagine what you'd be able to do for your family if you did that? Just a little side note, right? Um, so after he passed away, I decided I'm gonna go Ruby. I'm going to push for this Ruby because this Ruby is going to help me be able to get my, my bills caught up and not have to worry about you know my debt and all the stuff. So I built myself to Ruby and I was given an ultimatum at work. Okay. Once again, I was derailed off my path. My nine to five job at the nursing home, um, you know, they had said to me, you can either switch locations or you can give your two weeks. The other locations they wanted me to go to was another hour away from me. So what that would have taken me two hours to get to work. After seven years of working for a company, this is what they do, right? This is a, this is a corporate world. And so I decided, no, 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 no. 
I've got this business. And now that I'm Ruby and now that I'm earning bonuses, now I'm going to put the pedal to the metal and I'm going to make it happen. And so I decided to give my two weeks at that job instead of switching locations. And I went all in on this business. Now, do I recommend it? No, I really hope that you guys make the decision to, to push through and pay off your debt and pay off everything before you, you give your two weeks at your job. That's a smart way to go. But sometimes I feel like God gives us this path where he kind of pushes us out of the nest, right? And we have to decide to just go out of the nest and either learn how to fly or go back to, you know, the way that it was before. I mean, obviously birds can't do that, but when it comes down to it, um, you know, I had to make the decision for myself, learn how to fly or crash and burn at the bottom. And I decided to learn how to fly. And I did it really, really fast in this business. So I went all in, I did whatever it took. I stayed up late. I woke up really, really early. Um, I came home full time and I built my business all the way to diamond. So I did Ruby within seven months. And within that, that whole year, I went diamond because I literally gave it my all. I pushed, I went all in and I figured, I thought to myself, you know, Chelsea, you've been through so many hard things in your life. What's one more thing, right? What's one more thing to get up and just push to give it, you know, to give up your sleep a little bit. You've given it up sleeping on couches. Like why can't you do it now? Right? So I focused and I, I went diamond. Okay. That winter after I went diamond, I lost my diamond. I had a really, really good friend, someone that I thought was a really good friend. And here's, here's the season where, where I learned that people come into your life for a season, a reason, or for life, write that down. They all come into your life for a season, reason, or for life. And most of them are coming into your life for a season or a reason. This person at the time she quit and I was devastated guys. I am a super yellow, if you didn't know. And so I attached myself to her like crazy. I thought we were going to go all the way to the top together. I could see her and her two boys living the life that they deserve because of this business and because she just continued and kept going with me. But what I didn't realize was that when it came down to it, that door was closed because someone else was supposed to walk into my life. And if she didn't walk out of my life, I would have never found my next person that was going to go Emerald. Okay. So I, I ended up losing diamond, um, quit. She quit her whole team quit with her. Obviously they fell, they followed the leader. And so I lost everything. And in that moment, I had to make the decision for myself. Do I keep going or do I quit with her? Do I say, oh, woe is me. I'll just go back to the nursing industry and hate my life again. Or do I keep going? And in that moment, I decided to keep going. So I lost it. I gained, I ended up gaining it back, but I gained it back and also gained my fiance's diamond back. So our 2.0 account went diamond as well. So I fell, but I came back up 10 times harder. Okay. I hit that next diamond and hit diamond and I became really, really close friends with the people that were on my downline. And I'm going to tell you what, once again, everything crashed. I had one person quit and it was like a whole house of cards. The wind blew and every single one of them decided to quit at the same exact time. At the time I was devastated. I was thinking to myself, okay, you brought me, God, you put, you brought me home. You brought Matt home. He was home full time because his account was diamond and everything. And I was like, why would you bring me here just to watch me fall, just to watch me fail? And I thought to myself, is this, is this not meant for me? Is this why, once again, I said, is this, is this not meant for me? Is this why this is happening again and again? Is this because I'm not meant to walk on this journey? Am I, am I not meant to be here? Am I not meant to, you know, grow in success? Am I, am I a good enough leader, right? Has anybody here questioned their leadership or their ability to, to lead other people? I questioned it the biggest in this season. And I'm going to tell you right now, in that season where I built his diamond and built my diamond and it crashed and burned, this was the season that I learned that doors close so brand new ones can open. I learned that in that season. That the reason why that door was slammed shut was because there was something bigger and better for me on the other side. And if I just keep going, I will find out what that is. So um, it crumbled. My team crumbled. 
everybody quit and I built it back up again. This is crazy, right? This is the third time that I built it back up. And I'm going to tell you what, it cr crumbled again. Again, it crumbled again. I didn't go down as far as I did that last time, but then it, the cycle continued and I just kept coming back up stronger and stronger and stronger. And we're on our way back up, but we are going past it. We are going further than we were before. Our team is more prepared mentally than they've ever been. We have people who are reading and growing consistently. We have people who are working hard every single day. We have ladies on our team who are getting host to post up consistently every single day. Everybody's posting, everybody's updating their story, everybody's following up, everybody's doing all the things that they're supposed to be doing. And that right there leads me to believe that I know that they're going to promote and that's going to send us to our next level, right? So when it comes down to it, the goal is VIP for me right now. The goal is to get to VIP and we're going to do it this year. But I know that if I would have quit back when my dad had a heart attack, I wouldn't have had the opportunity to be home with my son like I have the last you know, five years. If I would have quit when my grandfather passed away, I would have never, ever been able to live this life where I get to take my child to school every single day. If I would have quit the first time that we lost Diamond, I would have never, ever been able to, you know, build my backyard to the, exactly the way that I want it to be. If I wouldn't have built Matt's account back up to Diamond and my account back up to Diamond, I would have never been able to pay $16,000 in cash on an addition on my house, okay? I wouldn't have ever been able to buy my new Jeep. I wouldn't have been able to buy his new truck. I wouldn't have been able to do, do any of these things if I would have quit along the ro road of this whole path, okay? And so I want to shift your perspective tonight. This is my goal. I wanna shift your perspective or I wanna make sure that I give you a, a refresher tonight. Is that okay? Give me a thumbs up in the chat if that's okay. If I take take you guys on this road and show you exactly what it looks like to be on this road to success and the things that are going to happen. And I want to, I want to give you guys a great analogy. I want to give you guys this analogy. I love analogies, guys, something that you guys got to know about me. That's the way that I perceive things and understand things is when you put it into real life situations. So if you don't watch my, my Facebook page, I do a lot of lives that where I do a lot of analogies and stuff, and it just makes sense. It just all clicks together. So um, when it comes down to it, I'm going to share something with you guys tonight. Okay. When you started this business, you veered onto a road for a reason. You came onto this road of this business for a reason, okay? Why did you start this business? I want you guys to put this in the chat. What was your first initial reason why you started this business? I know for me, I started this business because we were losing our house. So I was $500 in the negative in two different accounts. I did not start this business so that I could build an addition on my house. I didn't start this business so I could buy a new vehicle. I didn't start this business so that I could bring Matt home full time. I didn't even know that it was a possibility that I could be home full time. I just knew that someone waved $500 in my face and said, you could get $500 every single month. And in my head, I thought my mortgage, I could pay my house so that I don't lose my house, right? Megan says financial problems and college loans. Absolutely. That's why you get started. Um, Reese says to gain financial freedom and to be able to stay home and watch my children grow. That is such a good idea. I love that so much. Okay. So when it comes down to it along this road, there are going to be yield signs, right? Like yield signs, forks in the roads. There's going to be some speed bumps. There's going to be some detours. There's going to be some, some different, you know, things that are happening on this road that are going to cause you to either have to slow down or maybe speed up or maybe, um, veer off or maybe, um, yield for a minute. Right. Or maybe you're going to, you know, send it over a speed bump and you're going to lose your wheel or your tire. You're going to have to figure out how to get a new one right? There's so many things that are going to happen along this road. And 
Um, when it comes down to it, when I think about all the things that I, I went through on this journey to diamond several times, um, I think about, I think about the, the possibility of people judging me. That was one of the biggest things that I faced when I first started this business. Um, and this is the crazy part about it. Those people who are judging me are on the road that is frequently traveled. You guys know what I mean by that? It's a road that most people are on. It's the nine to five job route, the safe route, the route where you have a solid job, right? And they're on this road where if their boss fires them, guess what? You go and find a new job, right? And they're on this road where you, you know, you work every single day until you hit 65 years old and then you retire. I think the, the retirement age just upped, but when it comes down to it, you work until you're dead. And then that's literally the road that they're on. And so um, that is the frequent road. And so all these people that are judging you, they're on this frequently traveled road where they're going to live that life of work, 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 and you only get paid a certain amount. And what they do is when they're judging you, it's because they don't have the guts to go on the road less traveled. Okay. They don't have the guts to do that. One, two, they're trying to bring you over to that road. They're trying to say, no, 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 it's not safe over there, okay? You've got to come back over here because they're uncomfortable with that. You want to know why? Because the road that they're on is going this way. The road that you're going on is going this way. And do you notice what, what's in between that? Distance. They are afraid that if you go on this road and they're going on this road, there will be too much distance in between you. So what they do is they'll try to say, no, let's detour and go this way. Let's head back to the road so we can meet back up. But I'm going to share with you guys, this road is ditching your dream that's at the end of this road. So you have to make the decision, do I keep going on this road that is less traveled? Or do I keep going on this road where everybody's tired, everybody's miserable, everybody is not liking themselves, everybody's following everybody else, everybody's people pleasing, everybody's being somebody they're not, everybody's trying to, to go no somewhere and not getting anywhere, right? Everybody's failing and failing and failing and failing and failing and failing and not realizing they have to get back up, right? This road is a bumpy road. It's a whiny road. It's a curved road. It's a road that's really, really tough sometimes. But this road is going to bring you to your dreams, whereas this road is going to make you, it's going to keep you in a box, right? And so um, I wanted to share that part with you guys because that was the biggest, the biggest reason why, uh, or the biggest thing that held me back in my business when I first started was people pleasing and being afraid of what people thought of me and hearing those, those people or those family members that are, um, you know, saying those sly remarks. Like I remember my sister saying to me, why don't you go get a real job? And I remember my mom telling me, you know, those things don't work. You, you should probably just go back to the nursing home. Right. I remember people saying these things to me. I remember telling my friend how excited I was to be able to run this business and hoping that she would buy from me. And guess what? She never did. She never did. And she never supported me. And now she's on this road and I'm on this road. Guess where it is? There's distance between us and I'm okay with it because my dreams are coming true and she's staying exactly the same. So I got, I got the opportunity when I started this business to change my entire life, to literally switch the, change the game, to be able to change everything. So if you are on the road that no one is understanding good, that means that you're on the right road. If nobody understands you and nobody's, nobody is, is getting it and everybody's trying to get you to come back to the safety zone, that means that you're on a path to success and they know it. That's not a sign that you should quit. That's a sign that you should keep going. That's your sign right there that you need to keep going forward. And that's the mindset of Diamond.
is that we understand that other people are doing different things. We understand that people are going to judge us. We understand that people are going to reject us the entire time. We understand that people are going to tell us no. We understand that people are going to make fun of us and yell at us and get mad at us. Or, you know, our husband's going to tell us it's not worth it. Our mom's going to say some crappy remarks to us, right? Our family's going to try to suck us back into the road most traveled because they're so in fear that it's not going to work for us because they've never done anything in their entire life and they're just scared for themselves, right? No one's going to understand your dreams. And God put those dreams on your heart for a reason. God didn't put that dream on your mom's heart, your husband's heart, your friend's heart, right? He put it on your heart for a reason. It's not their job to understand it. It's not their job to know exactly what it is. It's not their job to consistently support you and consistently know what you're doing and all the things. So it's important to understand that coming into a diamond position where you're going to work it, um, you're going to work it on those days where people aren't going to understand you. There's going to be bumps in the road, like family members are going to pass. Just like I said, my grandfather passed away. I had to make the decision. My grandfather passed and there was a fork in the road. Do I go this way and quit because of that and let all of his hard work on teaching me all the things that he taught me in his life go to waste? Or do I keep going? and push past it and live to honor him and say, I did this because my grandfather taught me this. Okay. Um, there's going to be setbacks in your business. People are going to quit on your team. You've got to let people get off the bus and you've got to allow other people to get back on the bus. Right. Um, you're going to miss promotions. How many of you guys have failed at a promotion or failed at a bonus? Drop a four in the chat. If you've ever been there before me, I just missed a promotion last month. And guess what? I missed one the month before. Guess what? I missed one the month before too. Guess what? I missed one the month before too. I have been down this road where I failed and tried again and failed and tried again and failed and tried again. But I'm telling you right now, I've also seen the top of the mountain. I've also seen what it looks like when you try and fail again and again until you make it there. And that's what I want to teach you guys tonight. So you're going to miss promotions. And in, at that at that moment, you know, you're at a fork in a road once again. Do you decide to quit because of that? Or do you keep going, right? Do you keep showing people that it's going to work if you just keep showing up? Um, your car is going to break down. You know, you're going to have to all of a sudden, your, your goal changed from paying your light bill this month with your bonus to, okay, I've got to come up with an extra $300 to pay for my car too. So then you have to pivot. You've got to figure out exactly how you're going to do that. What bonuses are you going to earn to make that happen? Um, you know, divorce is going to happen. God forbid, but that happens all the time. I've seen it multiple times in my business. I've taught over 700 women and I've seen it multiple times again and again. Illness is going to happen. How many of you guys have been sick since you started this business? I feel like all of us have. All, most of us have had COVID. We've had the flu. We've had strep. We've had, I can't even tell you how many women on my team come to me every single day saying they're sick. They don't feel good. They can't show up because they got this going on or whatever, right? The cold, like Megan said, you know, we're all going through the ringer and back. We all have things to do and we can make, we can, you know, hit this illness and say, okay, am I going to let this derail pregnancy? So true. Okay. I've been through a pregnancy with this business too. I had my son Bo literally like two years into this business. And so, um, you know, going through it, you're going to have life happen all the time and you have to make the decision. If you've got, you know, illness, are you going to stop or are you going to keep going? Um, you know, divorce, are you going to stop or are you going to keep going? Right. Um, your car breaks down. Are you going to stop? Or are you going to keep going? You're going to go try to find money somewhere else. Are you going to do what's, what is the most logical thing? And are you going to work your business so you can make quick, quick start bonuses again and again, right? You have to make the decision for yourself every single day. And the thing is, is that nobody else gets to choose. You are the only one that can choose whether you keep going or not. That's the beauty of life right now is that you get to make that decision every single day. And God might provide these different paths that you can choose. And he might provide a different story or he might provide, you know, that dream that's on your heart, but you have to choose to show up for that dream. You have to make the decision to keep going. You've got to meet him halfway and say, okay, I see this dream that you have. I see what I'm supposed to do. 
am I going to follow it? Or am I going to, am I going to follow all these people who are telling me just quit, just give up. It's easier just to go back to your nine to five job. It's easier just to, you know, take a year off. It's easier just to slow down. It's easier just to not send those messages tonight. It's easier just to watch Netflix with your husband, right? It's easier to do all these things that you, that you want to do, but you have to make the decision right then and there, whether you're going to take the easy route now, so you can live a hard life later, or are you going to do what's hard now? So you can live an easy life later. And that is a diamond mindset. Um, so nowhere on the road, this is something I wrote down and I'm, um, so it's so ridiculously true. Nowhere on your road to success. Is there a stop sign? Write that down. There is no stop sign on your road to success. If there is a stop sign on there, it's because you put it there. You took whatever the thing that you're going through, you took that as a sign that you should quit. You took that as a sign that you should give up. And so there is no stop sign there. It's called, you got to this fork in the road and you could either go, okay, I'm getting divorced. I should probably quit or I should keep going, right? You make that decision for yourself. I'm sick right now. I can't work my business. Okay, you can either quit or you can keep going. And you have that decision to make every single time something happens in your life along the way. And these things are going to happen. How many of you guys have gone through something? Just show of hands. You know, you could put, let's just put a, a heart in the chat. If, if uh, you've been through something in this business since you started, I could put 5 million hearts in here. Okay. The last five years has been just like my entire life has been crazy and chaotic. Life has happened. Crap has hit the fan. Seriously. But I've had to make the decision every single time to just keep showing up or quit, keep showing up or quit, right? Is there some times where there's a yield where life just hits really, really hard and I need to take just one day just to breathe? Absolutely. I've had days like that. And guess what? You run your own business. So you get to call the shots on things like that. But when it comes down to it, there is no stop sign in your, in your journey at all. If there's a stop sign there, it's because you put it there. Because to me, the finish line is when you hit your goals, when you follow the dream that God has on, on your heart, right? When you finally get that freedom, that financial freedom, that freedom of time, that freedom to be with your kids all the time, when you get to be able to take a trip with them, when you get to be able to pay for your wedding in cash, when you pay off all of your debt, when you don't have to worry about all the, the stress and anxiety of money anymore. That's your finish line, right? That's where you want to be along that path. There is no stop sign. There's nothing stopping you, but you at the end of the day. And that's a diamond mindset. A diamond mindset is going to be someone who is going to keep going regardless of how hard it gets. Have you guys ever heard the saying diamonds are made under pressure? This is what I'm talking about right now. Diamonds are made under pressure. Your entire road to success, you are going to have struggles. You are going to have hard days. You're going to have days where life's going to hit. Your family's going to disagree with you. They're going to blow up at you. Your husband's going to tell you, you know, I don't want you working this business anymore. Or he's going to tell you that you can't do this. Or your son's going to get sick. You know, you're going to have to, you know, take him here and there. You know, the kids are going to get out of school. Life's going to happen. Life happens to all of us and you have to make the decision to just to keep going. Um, so you will consistently have people trying to make you go back to the road less traveled. You'll get sly remarks from your family. You will get your, your other half saying that this isn't worth it, right? Just let's, let's just watch Netflix together instead, right? Um, you know, friends are not going to buy from you. They're not going to support you. Um, and it's still your decision at the end of the road. It's always going to be your decision. Do I take what these people are saying and quit or do I follow what God put on my heart or the universe, whatever you believe in, right? The road most traveled will not get you to your dreams ever. So whatever dream you've got on your heart, just know that if you decide to quit every single time you quit, you disqualify yourself from ever being able to achieve those things. 
unless you were to pick it back up, right? Yeah, negative remarks make me push harder. I love that, girl. Yeah, I love that. You know, and what's really, really crazy, I'm going to share this with you. I had a lot of family members who doubted me. You guys know my family. I've shared this with you already, right? I had a lot of family members who made very, very negative remarks to me along my journey. And I want to share with you guys that um, what's really crazy is that I have literally gotten to the point where I have been able to help family tremendously in, along the way on this business, on this journey. I've been able to help them. Um, I've been able to help them when they lost their jobs on that road, right? I've been able to help them when they were struggling to pay for food. I've been able to help them when they needed, you know, to hire someone to move certain things in their yard. And I was there to be able to do it, right? I have been able to help them when they were losing their traditional business. And I was able to step in and say, I'll work some hours for you to help you out because I have the freedom of time with this business, whereas they don't. So I get to do those things because of that. And in no way, shape or form, was it like a, like a, ha ha, I make more money than you do or anything like that. It's, it's like, I was able to be the bigger person because I went on this journey. I was able to grow to heights that I've never, ever seen before. And none of them will ever see until they get on this road. That's less traveled. Um, and so you know, the road most traveled will never get you your dreams, but you know what will? The road to freedom that you are on right now. That's what we're on right now. We are on the road to freedom. So let's take a second. Let's put in the chat. What road to freedom are you on? Are you looking for freedom of time? Are you wanting freedom of money? Are you wanting freedom to be able to pay your mortgage on time? Are you wanting freedom to be able to be with your kids full time? Are you wanting freedom um, from negative people and negative energy at your nine to five job? Are you wanting, you know, freedom from or freedom to be yourself? to love yourself, to be able to take care of yourself? Are you wanting freedom and independence? What are you wanting freedom? Like what kind of freedom are you wanting? Freedom and wanting my own home. That is so good. And I wanted all of the above guys. I wanted all of the above. I wanted to be able to pay my mortgage. And that was my first goal. But once I hit that first goal, man, did it feel good. And once I hit that first goal to be able to pay my mortgage every single month and not have to worry about bills, I got caught up on everything. That's when I went all in and I said, okay, if I can get this freedom to pay, pay my mortgage, well, maybe I can have the freedom to pay all of my bills from my phone. And then once I started hitting that goal, it was, okay, well, if I can have the freedom to pay all of my bills from home, well, maybe I can have the freedom to come home full time. And then once it became that it was, okay, well, if I can have this freedom, then maybe Matt can have this freedom too. Matt's my fiance. Maybe he can have this freedom too, to be home with our kids. And we did that. And if we can have the freedom to, to be home with our kids, well, maybe we can have the freedom to have another baby and build a, build an addition on our house. And, you know, all the things that we've been able to do with this business would have never been accomplished if I would have, you know, put my brakes on and went the opposite direction to go back to the path that's most traveled. I had to choose to stay on it. I had to focus on it every single day. So real quick, we got about 15 minutes left. I'm not going to take that much time, but I want to share with you guys some tips some diamond tips um, to get you to keep going on your journey and to make it so that when these things are happening, when you hit these speed bumps, when you hit these yield signs, when you hit, um, you know, the fork in the road, I want you to not, not have the option anymore to hit that stop or to put a stop sign there. I want you to learn how to have this in order to be able to have this freedom, you have to be willing to keep going. You have to be willing to focus on that road and know that it's hard. It's kind of like a, you can't unlearn things that you've already learned. Have you ever heard that before? Once you learn something, it is impossible to sit there and unlearn that. Once you see something, it's impossible to unsee those things. So if you know, just knowing now on this Zoom call that the road to success is going to be a bunch of twists and turns and yields and, you know, um, people walking across the street and bumps and, you know, your tire is going to fall off and your windshield is going to get a crack in it. And you're going to have all these things that you're going to have to do along the way and all these obstacles you're going to have to overcome along the way. If you know that it's happening already, when those things come up in your life, I want you to remember this Zoom call. 
remember exactly what I was talking about and that your goal is never going to be there unless you keep going. You're never going to get it if you keep going back to the road most traveled. And so um, I hope and pray for that for every single one of you. So anyways, number uh, five different things that are going to help you keep going. So if you want to write these down, great idea. Um, that way you can keep going in your business every single time that these things happen. And I'm telling you right now, sometimes there's going to be a strong pull back to the other side. There is going to be some days where life's just crap's going to hit the fan. Life is going to be real, real hard. And you're going to look and say, oh God, is this a sign that I shouldn't be here? Right. And I promise you, God's not going to put the stop sign in your path to what he is offering to you. He's never going to do it you are putting that stop sign there if you choose to walk away from it, okay? And so number one, have your why in front of you. You need to have a crystal clear vision of what you want in your life. What do you want your life to look like? If you are heading down this road and I say, okay, Megan, where do you want to go? Okay, like where are we headed, right? And you say, well, Chelsea, I don't know where we're headed, right? How are you supposed to focus on what God's got for you if you don't have that vision of what's being offered to you to begin with? You see where I'm going with this? So if it's kind of like if I were to if I were to have this, or even if I were to have this goal and I were to say, okay, Megan were to say, okay, Chelsea, we're gonna pay off all of our student loans. And you know, halfway through the trip. Megan shuts her GPS off. She has no map with her at all. How is she supposed to get there if she doesn't know where she's going? So you have to have that why in front of you at all times. You got to know what's at that finish line. You have to know exactly what you're aiming for every single day. Okay. Um, number two, you've got to surround yourself with other people that are on that road less traveled. Congratulations for being on this Zoom call tonight or watching the replay. Because that right there, you are surrounding yourself with other people who are doing it. You're getting on here because you knew tonight that you needed to be poured into. You knew that you needed someone to, to speak the truth. You knew that you needed someone to teach you something that you've never known or refresh your mind on something that you know you've already learned, but you forgot maybe. Are you, you have too many things going on where it's clouded your vision. So when it comes down to number two, you've got to surround yourself with other people. Get in your uplines inbox, 100%. I, and when it comes to, um, yeah, Megan put the thumbs up. Megan's in my inbox all the time. Why do you think she's signing people? She's getting hosts to post all the time. She is surrounding herself with other people who are doing it consistently. And so getting in your, your uplines inbox, um, getting in the group chats, the group chats are there. Want to know why? Because you're supposed to get around people who are on the road less traveled. You're supposed to get around them. And the best way to get around them is the group chats, group pages, get to events, get to conference, get to green carpet, get to the little um, events that are in the little areas, right? Get around people who are doing the same exact thing. Have those deep conversations. If there's a conversation that you need to have that's outside of your business because it's just fogging your brain, get in your upline's inbox. Have that conversation. Shoot, if you are on this Zoom call and you want to message me, message me. I love in-depth conversations. That is my jam. That is literally where I thrive is being able to have those conversations and helping you with your mindset. That's my favorite thing to do. So when it comes down to it, you want to make sure that you're getting around those people who are willing to help, who are willing to be there for you, who are supporting you. And I'm telling you right now, there is nothing like the people that are on the road less traveled clapping for you. The people who are on the road that's traveled consistently, you are, you are dancing for them and they are never going to clap for you. Okay. So it is so important to know that the people that are on the road less traveled, those are your people who are going to be supportive. Those are your people who are going to be excited for you. So, um, and I learned this the hard way when I first started this business, because I was always looking for the approval of other people. I was always just hoping that I would hit that next promotion so that people would just understand around me. Guess what? Made it all the way to diamond and nobody understood me still. I made it all the way to, to Diamond and put Matt's account to Diamond and nobody understood me still. 
I had to bring his account to Diamond the second time in order for in order for people to start actually understanding. And they still don't understand, but are they supportive now? Yeah, they are. But it's been five years, five years of me busting my butt, working it with them telling me that I should just come over to the, the easy side, come over to the side that's going to be easier for me, come over to the side where I can go back to nursing and, and make money and all the things, right? They've been trying to pull me back over there for five years. And finally, I've got some people and there's some people who I will never get the approval of. And you know what? Those people don't pay my bills. So when it comes, when it comes down to it, it's not, it's not anything that I have to be concerned about. So you want to make sure that you're following those people and being around those people, get on the zoom calls, get around those people. Um, if your upline offers you a one-on-one -on -one call, take it because you need it. We all need it. Um, and then number three, feed your mind. So you don't hear everyone else that is loud. Okay. Have you ever heard the saying that, um, and I might, I might be saying this wrong, but the loudest people in the room are the small mindsetted people. People who have small mindsets are the loudest ones in the room. And most of the time they're trying to pull you back over to the road that is most traveled. So you want to make sure that if, if you've got loud people around you who are consistently telling you it's not worth it, you can't do it. What makes you think you can do this? Maybe it's the thoughts in your head from your childhood telling you that you can't do it. You're not good enough. Run away, run away, run away, run away. I can't tell you how many times I've had that said to me constantly. And I've had to just fill my mind with books and podcasts and growth and development and journaling and learning from other people and showing up on seminars and Zoom calls and, and mindset mentors and tons of different things that grow my mindset. Have you ever heard the saying, and I know I'm, I'm throwing out a lot of quotes here, so hopefully you guys are catching all of them, but your income will never surpass your mindset. That's an unknown source. I don't know where that came from, but it is so true. It is 100% true. The reason why most people stay on the road, most traveled, living less than paycheck to paycheck, hating their life, not loving themselves, um, staying in a safe zone. Um, maybe they, they like their life, but they can't afford to go out on a dinner date with their husband, right? Maybe they like their life, but they can't afford that Disney vacation that they've been promising their kids that they, they would take them to. Maybe they like their life, but their boss will give them the time to get off of work so that they can take that trip to Disney. So what I mean here is that, is that every time that your mindset grows, your income, you give your income the opportunity to grow. You can't make a level 10 income at a level two mindset. This is why our team is the fastest growing personal development team. This is why we get our new girls reading a book every single week. This is why we're putting podcasts in the chat nonstop and we're showing it on our stories. If you haven't checked out my story today, I put a lot of books on there just so you know. So go check it out so you can get some good ideas. But um, what I'm saying here is that if you want your income to grow, you've got to grow what's up in here. There is no way to get to a level 10 um, you know, income with a level two mindset. You've got to get up there. Uh, so consistently growing, there is no time ever in your entire life that you should stop growing because if you're not growing, you're dying. Number four, set up smaller wins along the way. How many of you guys come from like an instant gratification world? Maybe you're not as self-aware about that. But what I mean by that is that if you don't make money quick, your mind starts thinking, you know, quit, give up. It's not going to be worth it. Okay. Drop a five in the chat. If you've ever felt like this before, we all come from an instant gratification world where we can literally go to McDonald's. We can order at a speaker and we could drive around the corner and get our food instantly. Okay. We can go buy a meal from the grocery store, put it in the microwave, press one minute on the microwave and boom, it's done in one minute. Okay. We can, we can literally, there's so many things that we can do instantly, like going to the grocery store and picking up butter, right? We don't have to go through the process of actually making butter anymore. 
We don't have to go through the process of mailing someone a letter to get a hold of them anymore. We could pick up the phone and call them. Shoot, we can send them a text message, right? We don't have to go through driving, you know, uphill, up five different hills just to get in, in front of someone and see someone's face anymore. We can call them on FaceTime and instantly they pick up and we can see their face. This is what I'm talking about when I say it's a microwave world right now. We live in instant gratification every single day. 2023 is like such a blessing, but it is a curse also. It is a curse in disguise because it's teaching us that we can get things instantly. So we have to learn that with success, it's the complete opposite. Anything worth having in life is worth waiting for. Anything worth having in life is worth going over the bumps, the, the uh, breakdowns, the stalls, the yields, the mountains, the valleys. It's worth it. And if, it, if it's something that's instant, it's probably not worth it. Okay, so it's the opposite from what society is telling us right now. That's a diamond mindset. Number five, this is the last one, is to always revisit your plan and learn how to pivot. So you remember how we're talking about this road to success that you're going on. Let's just say you get going and you sign someone up. Let's just say, you know, um, re-sign someone up and she finds a friend named Kathy and she gets started with her and Kathy is killing it. She becomes so close with Kathy and she's doing so good. And then all of a sudden Kathy gets like this close to Ruby and she quits and walks away. A diamond mindset is okay. Kathy quit. Who's next? Right? A fixed mindset says, Oh, Kathy quit. So I guess I'm never going to be a diamond. I guess this just isn't meant for me. Can I really lead someone? Can I really make it happen? Is it worth it to train someone brand new? A diamond mindset says, okay, Kathy quit. Who's next? This is you pivoting. You get to make the decision. Do I quit with Kathy? Do I let Kathy drag me back to familiar? territory or do I keep going on this road to to go towards what God's got for me at the end you get to make the decision and nobody else gets to make that for you I really hope that this has helped you tonight um this is going to be happening every single Wednesday night I've got a zoom call about mindset um I think next week is something about what the mindset behind signing loyal customers and big bonus volume okay so if you are needing customers this month and um maybe you know you're doing all the things and you've got it going on but you are like, how am I supposed to get them? A lot of the times it's your mindset. And so I'm going to teach you about the mindset behind signing loyal customers next week. And I'm so excited about it. It's the same ID number, same password and everything. Thank you guys so much for hopping on. And I hope that you have an amazing night.